Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Krakenfall and I'm tired. <laughs> I I have not been sleeping well. I've been doing a lot of extra work both at my full-time job and for my channel. And I think it's just catching up to me. I've got, I'm getting over something for sure. So today I'd like to eat, take it easy. And instead of doing a reaction like I normally would, I'm gonna clean my room. My satisfactory room. <laughs> So today we are going to be taking a look at this. This is my modular frame satellite factory. And I've got a lot of things going on. We've got several different inputs. We've got iron smelting. We've got copper smelting uh, over here. And uh, copper is looking pretty good. I mean, it's not the prettiest, but it's fairly organized. You can see a standard array of smelters. And we've got mergers. I've got uh, the input copper ingots, uh, inputting to each of the constructors to make these copper sheets as fast as they can. We're, we've got Mark IV belts to pull them in to storage, cache a bunch of storage, and then output them off to my <laughs> to my tentacle town city. Uh, I also have a new factory. This is the electronics fabrication plant. It's very cool. You will see that soon in uh, the Satisfactory Let's Play. But for now, back to the copper. Uh, so we have this very organized array. It's not the most compact or efficient, but uh, once the ingot inputs finish distributing on the ground floor, then they uh, it snakes up to the top floor. Oh, I am totally out. Ah, dang it. <laughs> I'm out of fuel. All right, we're back. So then the ingots come up to the second level and it's all very organized. We've got uh, the inputs and then the constructors, and then the outputs, and the mergers. It all comes down, snakes in, and then merges with our primary supply. This is nice. I like it. It is very good. So why have I done it this way on this side? <laughs> well, the answer is, uh, this is my first factory that was actually, I don't want to say organized, but this is the first factory that used foundations at all. And I hadn't quite learned how I wanted to do things. So, what I would like to do today is clean my room. I would like to clean this up. I would like to make it a lot more streamlined. The only thing is, it's a little bit more complicated than the copper. Because copper is one input, copper ingots, one output, copper sheets. And then it conglomerates into the supply line that uh, ships it off to another place. The uh, thing about modular frames is that you have two inputs that are not base materials. We have iron rods, and then we have reinforced plates. Uh, and reinforced plates require two things screws and iron plates so we have four ingredients we have iron plates screws reinforced plates and then iron rods and that all turns into modular frames and modular frames are so slow i could overclock it but you know i need to have the input materials in order to do that i'm thinking we're going to just tear everything down like not pay attention to what's there not try to like refactor things make it one improvement at a time or dismantle one constructor and everything get connects to it and then replace it with something more organized. I would like to just wipe it, clean slate. Uh, and then I think I'm gonna cluster the each material step in one area. So I will have a vertical stack of iron rods. Those will output into screws and then the modular frames and then another stack of the iron sheets or iron plates. Uh, and that'll give us a nice organized way to then input everything into the modular frame uh, assemblers and we'll be in business. So let's get started. <laughs> Just hold it down, hold down control, we'll delete everything. This feels so bad. Oh, I'm deleting the floor. Uh, that's okay. I don't think I've deleted things with this much abandon. This really is just so extra. Everything snakes into each other. That's what happens when you build something iteratively, but not organized. All right, we have an, an even playing field, I think. Uh, you can see how regular, I was gonna say organized, but how regular the copper uh, structures are set up and everything is in sh you know nice straight lines. I think we're gonna try and replicate that on the right side but we've got a little bit more space since we've got, you know, those four ingredients we were talking about. Let's go. All right, so I took a break for recording and uh, forgot to start recording again. <laughs> so we have uh, organized the iron system. 
So we've got iron coming in uh, from three different sources, a total of, I believe, 240 ore per minute. I think that's normal node at Mark II, so two, 120, 60, and 60 with impure nodes. Um, so we have expanded the setup from, uh, or extended the setup from the copper, where we have the smelters down here in a neat row, uh, and they pull in the ore from the back and then put them in mergers. Uh, it's a little disorganized here, uh, which I don't like, but you know, it's an iterative process. I'll probably clean this up eventually. Uh, so for the iron ingots, we've done the same. Uh, we have eight, which is should max out uh, the inputs for the ore, you know, not including smelting time. So we've got everything all ready and uh, we're going to pivot. Um, because I started setting down an assembler because I want to plan out how many exactly modular frame assemblers I want up and running. Uh, and I noticed this. I have the alternate recipe for modular frames, which is steeled frames. And we need steeled pipes. And that reduces the amount of screws because I really don't want to have to deal with screws. Screws stink. Screws require iron rods and iron rods are used in modular frames with the base recipe. And so it, it just complicates things to a degree that I don't want. So what I've done is I went to this coal line, which goes to both my coal generators and my electronics fabrication plant. And I went and overclocked it. So it is fully overclocked with Mark IV belts. So 300 coal per minute, which increased with that overclocking. And then I split it off uh, and stole some coal for a new steel, steel line. So let's go ahead and, and just build a foundry get some steel going and get some pipes going. And that works out well because we've got this extra line here for uh, the base materials like the ingots. So let's get some steel ingots going. And if we look at this, we have also a solid steel ingot recipe, which just requires two iron ingots and some coal, which should keep us running pretty lean, so that'll be good. And that requires 40 iron ingots per minute and two coal and multiply that by three just to take a look then we'll need 120 iron ingots per minute to produce 80 uh steel per minute uh was that 80 steel per minute 180 steel per minute so half of our iron ingots are going to go towards steel the other half will go towards screws and iron rods so it's a slightly compact system but it should get us going with the coal Ooh, that is absolutely too crooked for me right now. Perfect. All right, so we've got our steel. So let's start with four modular frames. That'll be 12 modular frames a minute. Not great, but that will require 40 steel pipes per minute and eight reinforced iron plates per minute. So if we place another assembler for iron plates. Oh, I've got an alternate iron plate as well for copper wire. I don't have to deal with screws. I'm pivoting again, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, how many does that cre produce though? 5.625 per minute, so five and five eighths reinforced plates per minute, which means in order to make, is that eight reinforced plate per, per minute? I will only need two. Um, so maybe we can do more modular frames. So we can do, let's try for eight modular frame assemblers that would mean we'd need 16 reinforced iron plates which is three assemblers for iron plates and then we would need 80 steel pipes per minute okay 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 that was premature but let's place our assemblers for the modular plates because we, we're, we're gonna make eight we gotta have the room for that we'll just put them in a straight line for now so i've got room for six unless we go for a second row and why don't we do that? Okay, so those would be our modular frame assemblers, which means we then need three reinforced plate assemblers and then enough room for wire and iron plates. Oh, I don't have to use screws. I keep on thinking, but what about the screws? I don't have to. Yes. I'm so happy about that. 
So I've got 120 ingots for iron sheets, but I don't know if I'm gonna have enough steel ingots for 80 iron iron pipes. So let's get the iron pipes figured out. I know I can just, I th I'm thinking I'm just going to steal some of the extra copper capacity because you can see I've got plenty of iron ingots or copper ingots to spare. So I could just steal some of that and make a little line of wire constructors. So I think wire is good for that alternate reinforced iron plate recipe. So I just need the iron plates and the steel pipes. So let's, let's get that figured out. So for steel pipes, I have 20 per minute. So that means I need four constructors to support 80 steel pipes and eight modular frames. Now, if I can help it, I'd like to build more. I'd like to build excess because maybe we'll have more, uh, more than eight modular frames at the end of it. All of these variables that we're dealing with are, are in flux. So I just have to focus on one thing at a time and then make sure that I, before I finish, I ask the question, do I have enough room for more? And so let's get these constructors all figured out. Dude, what are you doing in here? Come on, sir. Sir, this is a Wendy's. Sir, these are restricted premises. Please leave. <laughs> He's like, busted. Nyom. All right, so we've got all of the constructors working on the steel pipes, and uh, now we just need to collect their outputs. And in order to do that, I think I'm gonna try a little trick. And what I'd like to do for that is delete one of these, and then I'll put a conveyor belt pole right next to it. And then at the exact same location, along and aligned with the conveyor lift over there, I'm going to make an input pipe or conveyor lift here. What this will allow me to do is make a conveyor belt across at the same level, perpendicular. And I'll delete that. It'll allow me to set a splitter right here in the middle. And actually, it will be a merger. And I think I'll do the same thing over here. to receive the pipes. Then I'll put a merger at every single constructor output. There we go, clean. And now all our pipes are ready, ready for use. Now we need to make reinforced plates. In order to do that, we need iron plates and wire. So we've got these iron ingots to work with for the iron plates, and we also have the wire. And since wire are gonna be stealing from the ingots, the copper ingots over here, why don't we make the wire next? Now, how many wire do we need? Do we actually need? So we'll need three reinforced plates assemblers, right? And uh, like I said, I'm gonna want to put more in or I wanna make it flexible. So let's just say four to six, four to six reinforced iron plates uh, assemblers. And then we've got 37.5 times six at max. And if we just use the handy dandy calculator, 37.5 times six. So we need 225 wire per minute. Now, if we get a constructor out and uh, figure out what wire costs, it's 15 ingots per minute uh, for 30 wire per minute. So 225 divided by 30 gives us seven and a half, so eight constructors for wire. So why don't we get copper ingots out for this? Uh, and look, we've got a handy copper ingot output right here that we can steal from. So let's do this. There we go, perfect. Now we can set up our constructors.
There we go. So I just noticed that we are running out of room. So I may want to reconfigure this. So we still need to make room for the iron plates and the reinforced iron plates. I think we're going to have to go to the next level. Uh, which makes sense, because then we can put all the iron stuff together. Uh, excuse me, the iron and the reinforced iron plates uh, together. So we'll, our wire will get shipped up to the second floor, and then our iron ingots can get shipped up to the second floor to build the iron plates. Uh, both kinds. So why don't we just start zooping up foundations? And we'll start with the six constructors for the iron plates and then the assemblers for the reinforced iron plates. So the wire comes in here, and I think that means we'll put our assemblers for the reinforced iron plates on this side. So why don't we just bring the iron over to this side and we'll do an array of six constructors. One, two, and three. Too fast. There we go, a nice right angle. Hmm, I guess not quite right angle. Yeah, let's fix it. So one, one, two. Perfect. And we'll configure this for iron plates. And we'll control C that. I wish I didn't have to get so close to paste the settings. There we go. Everything's merged together and ready for use in uh, in the plates. Iron pl uh, reinforced iron plates. Now these, I don't think we can be as, as compact as the constructors. We can't put them input to input like that on the splitters so we don't have enough space uh, actually yes we do that works That's ingots, not wire. Oh, I haven't I haven't merged the the wire yet. That's funny. No wonder it's ingots. All right, I think we're ready to go. So now we have 24 modular frames coming out a minute, which is going to be drastically different than uh, what I had before, which I think was like four per minute. And my heavy modular frame factory can get going. Uh, oh, <laughs> I, I didn't combine these streams yet. All right, let's get the exports for the modular frames out and then we're done. And with that, we are done. We have a new modular frame fabrication plant <laughs> or manufacturing plant. And uh, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but we're using alternate recipes now, which should be a lot more productive. And I think we've done more math than I did last time for sure. So it should be a much more efficient plant. Can always overclock things and get things going a little bit faster, but then I gotta deal with excess. Um, but that's a problem for another day because today we have what we need and that is more modular frames for everything else. <laughs> we are good and it looks, it looks pretty good. It looks very regular. I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, Hey, if I, if I want it to be perfect, I can always come back and, and do another cleanup session. What about power? How is my power doing? I never really looked at that. <laughs> oh, we're totally fine. Max consumption, we're still underneath the, the max production. I've just started fuel, fuel, fuel power, but that is something I'm gonna show another time. Next stream, actually. So there we are.
All right, that was fun. <laughs> this game, I just, I just felt like cleaning stuff up, relaxing, and I felt bad about not doing a reaction video this week, so I wanted to do something. So hopefully this uh, will suffice, I guess, if you want content from me. If not, I'm sorry. Thanks for watching to the end anyway. What are you doing? If you didn't like it, then why are you here? But, you know, tell me down in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. For everyone else, thank you for watching this long. I'm really enjoying Satisfactory, and so it's good to get in here and uh, just kind of zone out and make stuff. It feels really productive, and that feels really good to me. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Krakenfall. Check out my Satisfactory Let's Play, uh, which is a lot more high energy than this for sure. Anyway, I hope you have a good one, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.